ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ನೂನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಹೇಗಿದ್ದೀರಾ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಊಟ ಮಾಡಿದ್ರ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಆಡ್ ಲಂಚ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸ್ ಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಶೋಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಅ ಹೆವಿ ಲಂಚ್ ಓಕೆ ಮೈ ನೇಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಹರೀ ಶ್ರೀನಿವಾಸನ್ ವಿ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಹ್ಯಾವಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಪ್ಯಾನಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕಷನ್ ಟುಡೇ ಆನ್ ದ ಫರ್ಟಿಲಿಟಿ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಅ ವರ್ಕ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ದ ಎಂಪ್ಲಾಯರ್ಸ್ ದ ಲೀಡರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಟೀಮ್ ದ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಚಾಲೆಂಜಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಕೆನ್ ವಿ ಮೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಅವ ಇದು ಅವ ಇವತ್ತಿನ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ವಿಲ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಕನ್ನಡ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಇಂಗ್ಲೀಷ್ ಆಸ್ ಮಚ್ ಆಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಡಿಯರ್ ಫೈನಲಿಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮೀ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟರ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಲೆಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಸೆಟ್ ದ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶಿಲ್ಪಾ ನಿಮಗೆ ಮೊದಲು ಕಾರ್ಪೊರೇಟ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ನಲ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ಫರ್ಟಿಲಿಟಿ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇರ್ತೀವಿ ಇದರಲ್ಲಿ ಇದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಒಪಿನಿಯನ್ ಏನು ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಹೈ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ಮೀ ಟು ಟಾಕ್ ಇನ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಆರ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಂಫರ್ಟಬಲ್ ಓಕೆ ಮೇ ಬಿ ಮೇ ಮಿಕ್ಸ್ಚರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಹರಿ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಇನ್ಫರ್ಟಿಲಿಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಆನ್ ರೈಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೋನಿಷಿಯಲಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೆನ್ ಟು ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಸೀನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ರೀಸನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ನೋ ಇನ್ ದ ಕಾರ್ಪೊರೇಟ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನಿಂಗ್ one thing what can can contribute is chronic stress which is associated with the corporate world which we all know not only other corporate world yes it stresses everywhere but probably more stress towards the corporate world because of the high level of competition they need to perform well so they need to keep themselves awake and work long hours along with that they have a problem with the sleeping because they work long hours sleep late and wake up early that cir- circadian rhythm what our body is made up is been imbalanced by this sleep patterns that is one thing the uh, we all know there is lot of lifestyle modifications changes we have done going towards the western culture going for more of processed food what we call as junk food and all those things these definitely have high calories but that doesn't serve our nutritive purposes so this will increase the obesity in us which will decrease the sperm count in the males and the ovulatory dysfunctions in females third thing is lack of exercise physical activity we are on to the sedentary lifestyle because we don't get time we are working 12 14 hours a day we don't have time for ourselves to f- do physical activity increases the obesity apart from that we are delaying the family planning we want to settle first in life buy a car buy a home get settled in our job get all the incentives our promotions then we want to plan for the fertility and we all know as the age increases fertility goes on declining both with males and females especially with the females we have seen de- rapid decrease in the fertility after age of 30 to 32 years the ovarian levels drastically come down that cannot be increased uh the packaged food what we call we they have a lot of preservatives which causes lot of hormonal imbalances in us even the plastics what we are using they have the B, called bap the component which decreases the fertility by causing effect on the sperm and the ovaries apart from this i think uh, environmental factors for growing also we vegetables we are using pesticides insecticides this has a huge effect because we are seeing infertility even in the uh people farm as agriculturists who have very little stress but they are coming with azospermia and oligospermia these are the few factors i can uh, attribute anything else you want to add answer that's good dr shilpa thank you so much uh dr naga will address you as siddu is that okay okay siddu ji um any opening words before we get into the topic the main topic yeah um, i hope i'm audible thank you so i think first thanks to hari shurbi and venu gopal and others who got me here and uh, the organizers uh, delighted to be here i'm here on my in my personal capacity right so uh, as a hr professional on the il barbekadre i had a, i just remembered uh, something which is uh, called a uh, subhashita in sanskrit i heard it somewhere i'm not a student of sanskrit so it says yasya kasya taror moolam yena kena api mishritam yasmai kasmai pradatavyam yadva tadva bhavishyati a very interesting thing okay which is uh, apparently means if i go somewhere get some two random plants grind them together and give it to a passer by something will definitely happen 
okay so to assume that everything uh, you know it can somehow you do something and something will happen is uh, is where this entire concept of design thinking comes in right we can look at fertility as a concern and try to generally put some uh, you know uh, bandaid uh, solutions as a professional right but then what bandaid solutions often result in are unwanted outcomes for example right uh, let's assume tomorrow there's a law that's passed saying that maternity leave is to two years in all companies right yeah there's going to be a lot of exuberance and happiness and genuinely so right but then you'll see that in the next three months the number of offers going out to ladies have gone down drastically right and hence this is what i mean that you can do something somewhere and something will happen but whether that something is what you want uh, right is uh, needs to be uh, seen and from that point of view i think doctor you touched upon it you know if i were to look at uh, <clears throat> a context in a european country i visited a few years ago i asked someone hey you know someone came to mcdonalds and i said en martira anta they were like oh i am a full time parent and <laughs> kind of hit me uh, because you know coming from india i am not kind of comparing or saying what is better or something i mean each to their own means adre illi it is like a societal checklist and kelsano madbeko magunu right one or two then i want to also go to a conference and talk and then i'll want to you know probably become a part time pilot if that's also allowed right so while the interest for life is there but there are trade offs which are hitting the business back right and um, and that's also because in india our salary levels decide the quality of life of individuals there is a de- definite distinct difference in the quality of lifestyle of someone who's earning let's say 8 lakhs per annum to 30 lakhs per annum after 30 40 lakhs then it's all accumulation but till around 30 lakhs people there is a significant difference in the quality of life and the quality of choices so adrinda enagutte that is where there is a reverse pressure into organizations where like you said people have got to have babies before a certain life uh, you know before age there is an implication at the same time there is a lifestyle economic pressure coming in right there is a variable in india which is supportive called parents and uh, in laws and grandparents and so on which is kind of pushing the system uh, so if i were to get into him what is it that companies are looking at there are some companies that have wonderful uh, I, i think right they do give for reimbursement they have insurance policies that support they even have like you know when people have to go for the fertility treatment cycles they have separate you know leave uh, you know that's provided now the thing is why can't all companies do it right we'll answer that next thank you so much priya ji next question to you as a senior hr person do uh, people working people employees at it companies or corporates do you really see a lot of struggle in infertility do they come and share with their hr is there a culture around sharing um, do you, what do you see on the ground as a hr senior person thanks hari hi everybody um so uh, thanks for that question um thanks hari for that question um you know interestingly we are very proud of this burnout culture that we all live and work in right while we've normalized that what we've not normalized is talking about uh, reproductive health infertility right and it's it's the burnout a uh, culture that has contributed to it so uh to your question unfortunately uh it's not talked about a lot in organizations uh right it's not normalized and uh it's not yet a psychologically safe place for people to come up and openly talk about it maybe in pockets uh so one of the 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 trends or the initiatives that's catching up in organizations is around diversity and inclusion and as part of this um, initiative we have employee resource groups uh, that's one opportunity or one platform where mostly women of course uh, even men uh, suffer from infertility challenges but it's mostly the women that come together 
in a safe space where there's no judgment and the organization provides you this opportunity to to engage to to connect um, over you know common issues that they're experiencing when it comes to um, uh, infertility and reproduction health so you see that but it's not normalized and when it comes to senior leadership you know um, in a post pandemic era where health and well being and mental wellness is is gaining a lot of prominence uh, right there's a heightened need for it uh, a subset of all of this is uh, you know reproductive health infertility uh, right we need to look at it from a holistic angle not from a tick in the box like naga said a bandaid approach uh, right we need to look at it holistically uh, so these these are some of my uh, thoughts around this yeah thank you so much so let's dive a little deeper into the topic fertility benefit topic on sulpa olag hogana siddhu ji for you uh, you mentioned about the band aid solution that people are trying or so fertility benefits andre you know in what is the perspective with which employees the staff are looking at it kelsa mado jana fertility benefits andre yen expect martidare anta hr perspective kodakagutta sir very good question in fact uh, <clears throat> you know there is the thing is in india let's talk about india where we are working the uh, the expectation is fairly uh, you know i would say very very uh, reasonable right uh, because that's the way we are built okay and i think this is coming from a sense of does the uh, organization care for me uh, and do i have enough elbow you know these are the two things that employees expect it's a very reasonable expectation and i think uh, to operationalize this value of care is the job of the hr leader right um if you actually see the the when we talk employees we are also talking about a business i mean you are a ceo yourself so i don't i'm preaching to the choir but uh, when i'm looking at a business finally it is about the money that uh, you know share shareholders have put in someone else has put in and hence i can't actually run it like a welfare state i mean i'm thinking like a hr professional so how does it really work in my opinion is the way the work from home uh, thing has panned out right yaro uh, in a little lighter moment helta idro w f h andre work from home na work for home na anta right so slowly these kind of things also started coming in and ali yenake ond heart burn agutte andre you know people are saying you know i want to get a full salary while i am kind of going to be a little busy with something else right and hence i feel if we kind of uh, you know regularize it and say you know it's perfectly fine to kind of work for 4 hours a day with half the salary right number one it's going to create more number of jobs right instead of hiring one person i'm going to have two people half of salary two people right and the person is also going to have the elbow room saying okay you can i can kind of work part time you know my needs are taken care of because you know social security i don't get something here uh, at the same time i'm able to do whatever else i want and hence i think it's uh, there is a need to bring in very custom built policies in indian organizations really understand what people want instead of you know going for a big bang or a bandage approach and then rolling it back because it is not working right and then you know even if you had not done it people were kind of happy because of doing it and then rolling it back you kind of completely destroy the sentiment on the ground level right so again yadvat adva bhavishyati let's not do it right think through it get into details see whether it runs and then figure things out often at an individual level like you were uh, saying priya the the sense of personal confidentiality also it is very very deeply linked to a sense of one's own identity and so on especially this topic right so people don't like to talk about it openly right they they feel it is personal but the fact is that is impacting you as a human being and the whole human being comes to the company to work it's not that you know there is one uh, floppy drive you keep it at home and put the other cd and you come and say right? it doesn't work like that and as i was talking to some of my friends they were saying you're going for a infertility uh, related conference i said yes they said do you realize you're from india right 140 billion people you're talking about infertility 
I said, so it is not something you paint with one brush, right? You actually get into segments and understand, uh, you know, there are challenges, right? Uh, so these challenges need to be dealt with with a very custom, personalized approach, tailored approach, and then you find solution. Super. Thank you so much. Very, very clear concept on how fertility benefits should be thought through and designed. So thank you, Siddhuji. Dr. Shilpa, let me get next question now. So as you've been treating patients regularly, what is your perspective on how it will benefit the staff? Let's say there are couples who want to undergo infertility treatment. If you compare people who are getting some fertility benefits from corporates versus people who are not getting such benefits, how will, it that, how will that approach change? Will, will the outcomes be different? Will, as a doctor, will you be looking at it in a different perspective? Can you shed some light on that, please? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Hari. Here, uh, when you ask this question, I would like to tell you with an example, which I had uh, experience with my own uh, professional thing. This was a case long back. A uh, woman who was working in a corporate sector was in a really good position, very talented and was also awarded by the company for her, uh, the best employee for the branch. She was undergoing fertility issues and uh, she had gone to a lot of people and as a final result she came to me. But because of other financial issues not at the workplace, so though she was earning well, uh, at, uh, even at home you'll have financial crises and all those things, she was not very affordable for the higher end treatment. When I evaluated her and saw, I felt she was the right person to go for IVF treatment, which will give her the best results. So I advocated, I advocated her and even she was satisfied with what the answer she got. But because of this financial constraint, she couldn't go for the IVF. So she wanted to opt for a lower cost ones, which we usually advocate IUI, which has low effectiveness. So we, she went with multiple failed IUIs. Finally, she got depressed because of that uh, and mentally, mental agony. So she had to drop out of the treatment. And after I came to know, she quit that job also because of this psychological effect, which is uh, uh, affecting her performance in the company. After a couple of years, she came back to me in a more relaxed way and uh, with a more financially better position. She underwent the IVFs and she, she could conceive with a successful pregnancy. But in this case, what I want to highlight a few points is, one thing is, she could have gone for an early intervention rather than delaying her uh, fertility process for such a long time. Because of a financial deficiency, she couldn't come. Uh, if the company could have helped her little, at least to some part in that phase of her life, she would have definitely undergone earlier and had a good result, same result she has got, but in a better way. She, was, she quit her job. This affected the company also because the company is losing a very efficient person. Yes, one of the, I think being HR, I think the uh, employer, I, uh, whatever you, I, you must be feeling, you have to retain the best talents with you because uh, getting a best talents is very difficult nowadays. So retaining them is the best thing. So I feel uh, they could have retained her by giving little bit of uh, financial aid and also the mental and emotional agony she had to undergo all these years because of this delayed in fertility progress, even physically, mentally, emotionally. I don't think you can um, measure in any terms of cost or finances or anything. And even if the company would have provided her the financial to aid to certain extent, may her, uh, maybe her trust towards the company and her loyalty would have increased. This would have really they were converted into the increased reputation of the company. That's what I feel. These are the things, certain things I would like to add. Siddhuji, you want to add something? May I? Thanks. <clears throat> uh, you know, on LinkedIn, I was writing, uh, I was reading something about leadership and it said, uh, it said, uh, good leaders are boring leaders, Santa. Okay. So, I'll also tell you something. If I were to ask the audience, how many of you did your everyday exercise in the morning today before coming to the conference? So, one hand or two hands have gone up. One and a half hands. Other person was not sure. So, <laughs> how many of you picked up your mobile as soon as you got up in the morning? All hands went up. Okay. So, the thing is, what is, thank you. 
what is uh, good in the long run is not exciting to do right really good leaders are boring people because you know they are not creating trouble and then trying to solve it just a little bit of drama tension anxiety you know if you allow the trouble to create and then you become a heroic leader trying and solve things and you know if you are the types who knows how to figure out things for the long run you know you become a very boring person similarly you know things like this uh, to proactively introduce stuff like this either the company is doing extremely well right deep 100 year plus deep pockets has a very social bent of mind etc so those are one set of companies right i'm talking of the other kind of companies just like the mobile versus exercise if you value something you will keep it well right and hence those companies which are able to see a clear impact of how retaining employees is actually going to give them 10x 20x 30x return on their investment they the ceos and the hr and the finance leaders who go to the board are able to convince them better for such policies right and hence instead to take a very moralistic high ground saying you are doing the right thing is like saying oh you know that leader is very good but you know someone's going to say he's boring guy right instead if i am able to sell to the uh, sell the concept to the investors in madidre you are able to reduce attrition idrinda you are able to you know add 1% to the bottom line i think that's the way to go to influence companies and get the money out for such initiatives very important point to drive any change in the leadership level it has to show either at the top line or the bottom line so very important point but a good point uh, dr uh, what you mentioned loyalty can be something that can be de- derived by providing such support structures thank you so much so coming to you priya ji so diversion inclusivity all of it is such a big topic today it's something that is driving the corporate world to a large extent and there's been a lot of positive change that we are all seeing so in that context fertility benefits how does it play do you see a role for fertility benefits in the context of diversity inclusion support for women except women empowerment and all of that what are your thoughts on this i think uh, i'd like to kind of pick on from from where uh, dr shilpa left when you look at from a diver- inclusion angle of course there are more women coming into the workplace and uh, which is resulting in delayed childbearing right because everybody wants to pursue their career aspirations uh, which is thereby Im- impacting uh, it's resulting in high infertility uh, now getting assisted reproductive uh, reproductive technology treatments is a very expensive proposition and also not easily accessible but today i think employers are well positioned to support and let naga said not every organization may have deep pockets to extend this benefit on reproductive health right and of course it's a journey uh, so organization and, and i think dr shilpa called it out well if you want to attract more women into your workforce you want to retain them you want to keep them engaged you want to help them in that journey from employee to motherhood and and forward then definitely at Uh, you know it's important to provide uh, you know uh, benefits around infertility so that's one group uh, that i'm seeing and then there is the uh, workforce of tomorrow with who you call the millennial generation or the alpha generation they're very clear they have their you know they're a very privileged generation compared to all of our generations because they live in a world of social media they're well informed they live in the world of ai uh, right they have their priorities very very clear and they want to work for organizations that provides mental physical well being and infertility benefits being a subset of that uh, and if you want to attract this the the talent of tomorrow you need to start thinking through in a very structured strategic way holistic way how do you attract this um and if you're going to be reactive and say when they get ready to join the workforce i'm going to build that uh, strategy or policy or framework it's not going to work because there's you know somebody it's such a competitive world for talent 
somebody else will grab uh, this this great talent be it the women be it the millennials or the alpha generation so that's that's a pattern that that we're seeing right so um, these set of answers sort of establish the need for fertility support from the organization so all the all the three of you are sort of in concurrence with that on that yes okay so let's look at the, what are the challenges what are the impediments that we see for designing a fertility benefit package within a corporate let's spend a little time understanding your perspectives on that i'll start with situ ji so from a employer perspective from the organization perspective what are the challenges you envisage new nodo prakara company run madoorge yav tara challenges irutte ee tara fertility benefit kodbeku anta idutte mans irutte onnond sali onnond sali mans irlikilla aadru kodlik yav yav tarad obstacles irutte adr bage on churu vishaya telisikodi so governance i will again take off on a tangent and then come to this ಗವರ್ನೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಂತ ಮಾತಾಡಿದ್ರೆ ಏನೋ ಸಂಜೀವ್ ಸನ್ಯಾಲ್ ಅಂತ ಹಿ ಹಸ್ ಸ್ಪೋಕನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಗವರ್ನೆನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಇಂಡಿಕ್ ಆರಿಜಿನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಗವರ್ನೆನ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ದಸ್ ಅ ಶುಕ್ರ ನೀತಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಅ ಬೃಹಸ್ಪತಿ ಸೂತ್ರ ಓಕೆ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಶುಕ್ರ ನೀತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ದ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಕಾಲ್ ದಂಡ ನೀತಿ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಯು ಮೇಕ್ ದ ರೂಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಯು ಬೀಟ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಟಿಲ್ ದೇ ಫಾಲೋ ಇಟ್ ನೋ ಇಂಡಿವಿಜುವಲ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡ್ರೇಷನ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಥಿಂಕ್ ದ ಬಿಗ್ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಲೆಂಜಸ್ ಆ ಮನಸ್ಸಿಗೆ ಬಂದರೆ ಅಂದ್ರಲ್ಲ ಅದೇ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಚಾಲೆಂಜ್ ಮನಸ್ಸಿಗೆ ಬರಲ್ಲ okay so i think uh, building this awareness saying that you should have uh, you know this set of uh, for helping employees for towards fertility goals is a first big challenge that we need to kind of start uh, building awareness the second challenge is to answer what happens after that because then immediately the company is going to say oh they're going to have a baby right <laughs> and then like i told you about the two year maternity benefit thing right now let's talk about things with clarity you know no point kind of uh, brushing it under the carpet so i think the second thing is finding out industry associations give you an example in retail iga if let's say a food retail company right having large hypermarkets one of them where i worked we actually said okay if you work with us for five years we will tie up with a food retail chain in the middle east so that you go there for 3 years make your money come back and join us as a supervisor or a manager right so these kind of interesting associations cooperative arrangements that they are made uh, because i know that there is a recruiting company in india uh, based out of chennai they only hire returning mothers okay and they are a 40 member team they all work from home and needless to say they are all profitable so similarly if organizations have an option saying you know yeah as a company i might not have the deep pockets to justify it but if you go through this path remember that you are one of us but you can take a break maybe work with this other organization for your skills where they are saying okay i cannot afford a full timer but part timer i also need right either a some level of uh, cooperative movement that i feel it really works in india right and uh, even small little things like you know salary advance you got you know i have at least seen uh, policies of 50 to 60 companies uh, salary advance policy andre minimum there are two reasons one is medical or marriage right medically typically they will say okay which hospital what is the issue right but if you can also add on small things saying fertility right of course it has to be handled carefully which is a bit of a challenge in india because right from salaries everybody knows everybody else's salary other than a compensation guy who needs to go to the excel sheet right everybody else on the floor knows everyone's salary so ee sensitivities ana solpa manasal ittkon madidre i think it's uh, we are through super thank you dr shilpa next question is to you so as you've been treating patients what are the sort of employee benefits that can be provided by corporates ಅಂದರೆ ಫರ್ಟಿಲಿಟಿ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ಸ್ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದೀವಲ್ವಾ ಸೊ ಇವಾಗ ಲೆಟ್ ಸೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಫೋರ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಲೀಡರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಟೀಮ್ ಇನ್ ಅರ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಫರ್ಟಿಲಿಟಿ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅವರ್ ಎಂಪ್ಲಾಯೀಸ್ ಯಾವ ಥರ ಫರ್ಟಿಲಿಟಿ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಫಾರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಈಗ ಸಿದ್ಧು ಅವರು ಹೇಳಿದಾಗೆ ಸ್ಯಾಲರಿ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ ಕೊಡೋವಂಥದ್ದು ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಅವ್ರ ಇನ್ಶೂರೆನ್ಸ್ ಕವರೇಜ್ ರೈಡರ್ಗಳು ಆನ್ ಮಾಡೋವಂಥದ್ದು ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಅದರ್ ಥಾಟ್ಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಟು ಯುವರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಸ್ಯಾಲರಿ ಅಡ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ ಯು ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇನ್ಶೂರೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ
uh, what uh, actually nowadays we are seeing a uh, few companies in the market they have come with the insurance companies they have come with the policies which include the fertility treatment also around i i search around 6 to 8 companies are already in the market who covers the fertility uh, treatments also i think if you have not uh, i'm also an employer being a director of city career center and also a, i'm running a college uh, being an employer aspect of point even i will think as i told like we have to see our pockets also first to spend on the employees especially for fertility treatment where India has a highest population rate. So whether it is really required apart from the other medical expenses. Yes, definitely we all know baby is an integral part of any family which makes the family complete. So I would in my position probably I would advocate in, to adopt for an insurance policies. If there are already existing insurance policies, we can negotiate with that companies so that they can include this fertility package in the existing comprehensive health packages that can be done if that is not possible we have our uh, gratuity fund which is released to the uh, person employee at the end of the retirement so a part of that gratuity fund we can make regulations in our own company or organization so that that can be isu issued prior hand as a part for the fertility treatment. That can be done without spending from our own pockets. That can be done. Or uh, we can do a 50-50 or 40-60 basis, like where we can cover 40 to 50 percent of the fertility treatment. And the remaining can be done by the, definitely the employee has to be done. Capping on the treatment duration or treatment cycles. If they are absolutely going for IVF, yes, Probably we, I may advocate for two, three cycles maximum of uh, that's all. But beyond that, they have to spend from their own pockets. And also, if it is absolutely necessary, for example, if fertility treatment doesn't include only IVFs or higher level of treatments, it can be even solved, as uh, your, uh, Madam told, with a holistic approach, more of a uh, lifestyle management, like simple ovulation induction drugs, all these things can easily solve the fertility problem in such cases or just going for IOI cycles. They're very less cost effective. If the problem can be solved with such lower cost effects, the fertility packages, probably who are going for higher uh, treatment like IVF, ICSI, or probably with fertility enhancing surgeries, there we can help them to a certain extent for the, this thing. That's what I feel. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, Priyaji, next question to you. So, uh, we discussed about the financial fertility benefits. There are set of, I mean, you, I mean, I, having spoken to you a few times now, I understand you look at things in a more culture perspective, uh, engagement perspective, uh, let's say work, work hours, flexibility, etc. Are those also something that can be designed inside the fertility benefits package? In addition to the financial support, what else? can be designed as part of a fertility benefit package from a corporate. Sure. Uh, so we, we, we looked at it through different angles, from a medical angle, from an employer angle. For an employee, we have to look at the softer elements, the humane elements. So one of the, I think the topmost benefit as an employer, if you're able to offer uh, fertility benefits, uh, is the reduction in stress levels, right? So the, the, the main reason that maybe um, employees are suffering in infertility today is because of the burnout culture, right? But if you're able to kind of offer this benefit to them, uh, then maybe they're able to take time away from work to go and uh, attend to their medical needs, their reproductive health needs, right? So it, thereby uh, reduces uh, the stress levels and anxiety levels, uh, which is a, a, a big deal, right? Then you look at uh, the concept of belonging. You know, it's diversity, inclusion, uh, equity, and belonging. If my employer offers me these, these uh, health and wellness benefits or infertility benefits, my sense of belonging is heightened. Right, uh, which means I'm more loyal. I think Dr. Shilpa touched upon it. I'm more loyal, I'm more dedicated. 
my job satisfaction level increases automatically and thereby I'm contributing to the output, right? The top line, bottom line of the organization. So that's a big benefit, right? Right there. Uh, then, of course, uh, I think if you, uh, in the form of training, because today what's missing is knowledge and awareness. Uh, we, we assume everybody's educated and they know uh, about infertility treatments or the benefits or what re resources are available, uh, what is accessible to them. But the truth is that's a gray, uh, you know, that's a big gray area. So I think uh, one of the benefits is to, to enhance the education and knowledge in corporates uh, about offering this benefit. Uh, talk more about it. Right. And uh, lastly is create mechanisms for employees to be heard. Right. Uh, give them a voice because today a lot of employees are silently suffering. Their, uh, their suffering is invisible today. But if you create a culture of feedback, uh, right, where HR, we as HR can provide mechanisms, uh, keeping in mind the stigma aspects, um, the career progression aspects because a lot of people think it might affect their career advancement opportunities. So try to bring in a very inclusive way to, uh, to hear them uh, so they feel heard, they feel valued. So these are some benefits from a, a humane perspective that can definitely be implemented. Very tangible, it doesn't cost you a lot of money to do these, uh, implement these strategies I would think. Yeah, very important points. Along with the financial support, providing an ecosystem that understands and provides a safe environment for the staff to share what they're going through. Uh, having that window where they feel that somebody understands me uh, is very important. Thank you so much. Siduji, you want to add something? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, there was this uh, thing recently saying uh, sometimes companies do seven rounds of interview, right? And uh, the guy leaves in six months. Okay. In a traditional Indian approach, boy and the girl meet for 45 minutes and the marriage lasts a lifetime. Okay. So uh, what is this seven rounds and still it's not working there 15 minutes is a supervised meeting. Okay, right? So uh, then we figured out it is because uh, someone commented and said, it's because the mom and the dad and the in-laws and the neighbor and the neighbor's dog, everybody is getting together to make this work. Right? Like Priya said, right? It's about creating an ecosystem. And when it is, it is not about financial only. It is not only about stress. It's also about the psychological support that the dad needs often. Because very early in my career, I had a manager who was completely unworkable with. Whatever you tell, he'll find a mistake. Okay, after this went on for three months, I went to the business unit head and said, what is this guy? You know, how will I work with him? Then he said, Sidhu, come here. Uh, and then he said, no, he's undergoing fertility treatment. Right? So it's a painful thing. So don't mind. Even if he comes and complains to me every day twice about you, don't worry, I know how much to give. So it is about setting up the system and the ecosystem like you said, Priya. And also about training people around them on you know how to give that support which is beyond financial beyond clinical right and uh, keeping things sensitive thank you so much so we are out of time already so i'll just have one round of final questions let's try and close quickly so i wanted to touch the topic of family versus career what is a priority how do people prioritize what does medical science especially on the fertility side the cryopreservation, social freezing of eggs. What is it? How can companies support it? How can employees look at it? So I want the doctor's perspective from you, Dr. Shilpa. HR perspective from uh, Sidhuji. Priyaji, from you, an employee's perspective on this thing. Yeah. Uh, yes, we all know about social egg freezing where uh, and fertility preservation. Uh, we all know a woman at a younger age has a younger uh, age X. So it's more healthy and more fertile. But by the time they want to settle in their life and start their family, it might be 35 years when already the egg aging has occurred, it will be 35 years old. So definitely the fertility decreases. What we can advocate is like advocate them to go for a social egg freezing. 
extumulation, take out the eggs, freeze it one or two cycles so that the eggs will be stored in the same way because uh, uh, science has developed so much that preservation can be done, crop preservation can be done in number of years. So even if she plans to have a baby after 10 years or 15 years, even at the age of 35, 38 years, she has an egg of 25 years old. The fertility chances will be the same, but she would have go, grown further in their professional life. So she can balance both professional as well as personal life. So they definitely I would advocate for social freezing. And even nowadays when I am seeing from past few days, especially the corporate culture because of the probably high stress, use of laptops, mobiles and all, we are seeing the decrease in the sperm count of the motility also. So even I can advocate even the freezing of the sperms at an younger age. That's quite very easy. So you can use that also can be used for further use if required. Super. That Thank thing. You. Second thing, I think uh, beyond that digitalization, we have seen uh, with the introduction of AI, digitalization has gone so far. We are uh, coming with a lot of apps that fertility tracking apps like ovulation uh, apps, tracking apps and all those things. At the workplace itself, they can track these things and go for a simpler methods, which will be stress-free and less cost, I mean, uh, less cost, uh, more cost effective. So that uh, it, financial burden is also reduced, stress is reduced. They can have a uh, plan the pregnancy whenever they want to. I think this and all will definitely help. Okay, thank you. Siddhuji, how to prioritize? Hey, hey, family complete madadru bage priority madbeka, atwa job bage prioritize madbeka. Hey, nod beka perspective. Me. I think the answer is left to every individual. Right? It is a trade off. Like I said, uh, European Deshigalali, they kind of plan for it. Uh, like I said, the quality of lifestyle that a person has is not as linked to the salary as in India. So there is always this trade of pressure here. If I uh, let go of the career, I'll have to wait for some more time for that level of uh, quality of lifestyle, right? So I think it's, uh, you know, it's uh, completely left to the individual. Uh, the only thing is there is this element of biology in this, right? And hence, uh, individual needs to take care of that also. So Priyaji, uh, so how does an employee look at it? So if a company is providing fertility benefits where cryopreservation of eggs or the sperms is available. Would an employee consider focusing on the job more and then plan to have a child slightly later? Would, is that something that you would see as an HR? Would, would you think that is going to add value at the organization's uh, attractiveness for hiring talent? Uh, well, of course, like Naga said, it's a, it's a very personal choice. Uh, right, I think uh, what we can do is to create that conducive environment, uh, right, uh, create psychological safety. I think if you do that, then maybe an employee is in a position to, uh, like Naga said, there are phases for every human being and the biological clock is ticking, right? So for a woman, if I'm talking from a woman employee perspective, uh, I think having accessibility uh, will help them take that decision. When I mean by accessibility, uh, looking at a more uh, comprehensive coverage, uh, right, when you're offering fertility benefits. When I say comprehensive coverage, uh, different types of assisted reproductive technologies like IVF, freezing of eggs, sperm banks, uh, surrogacy, uh, right? Uh, how accessible is this? Probably that will help the individual to take a decision then. You know, uh, because of this accessibility, uh, do I want to uh, prioritize family, uh, you know, childbearing uh, over my career? And do I have a safe environment to come back to? Uh, maybe after, as a returning mother, do I have, do I have to worry about social stigma that, you know, I, I avail the infertility benefit and now I'm coming back to work? Is my job secure? Uh, what are my opportunities of career advancements? Now, these are the different kind of topics that kind of uh, runs through a woman employee, right? If you're able to create accessibility, the right environment, I think uh, then it becomes easier for them to take an informed decision in a timely manner, uh, right? So that's, that's the way I look at that. So with that, we come to the end of the panel discussion. So as a take home message, I'll just summarize all the points that you 
people gave us. Thank you for your, all your inputs. So um, there is a certain amount of infertility problem in the workplace. Employees would be very happy if the employers can provide some sort of a fertility benefit package to them. Fertility benefit does not mean only financial. Financial would help a lot. But along with that, a conducive, safe environment provided for both the male and the female would make things very easy for the staff. And it would also bring in a lot of loyalty factor for people to stay back in the organization and their connect with the organization will be significant. Social freezing is something that is really picking up. Uh, people can plan and prioritize whether they want to focus more on the job or on the uh, family. It is an individual decision, but companies can support employees in this. This is the overall summary of today's discussion. Anything else that I would have missed out? Probably holistic approach, sir. Holistic approach. You yeah, can add. Holistic approach towards infertility treatment. Thank you so much. It was lovely talking to you all. Thanks for making time amidst your busy schedules and coming here. Thank you so much. News first. Nirbhit Hinda Nimaparavaki.